Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Jared Brandon, Brandon Wound Picker. Hey, it's me, Todd Novak. We are super excited that you are along for the ride of the Guitar Knobs podcast. It's going to be a fantastic night tonight because... It's a trip down memory lane. It's a trip down memory lane. Old school. So to speak. Uh, any of you who have, if, if you're a new user and haven't made it a little farther back in the catalog, or if you're an old user and wondering where Mike went, guess what? I'm here. He's here. Hey. Yeah. Mike Trombley, uh, native audio. Formerly of Red House. Yep. Red House Electronics. That's right. And former co-host of the... Guitar Knobs. Yeah. Podcast. I was like, what podcast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long. Okay. You're, yeah, 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 we got to yeah, knock yeah, the yeah. dust off those okay. old uh, episodes. I'm going to turn your mic off now. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's going to be really fun. We hung out with Mike at NAMM, and we have actually seen him at a, a bunch of shows. We do keep in contact with him, but he's a very busy boy, and he has advanced in his career in electronics, and so it's, it's hard for him to get a little time away. But he made a little... Made up some time for us tonight, and we're excited to have him. It's good. If for he's him so to good at electronics, why can't he make it like a robot of himself and send that to the yeah. podcast? Yeah, because I'm working on my or time machine right now. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, fair enough. The time <laughs> machine's give, a better investment. He's got a break. girlfriend. That's a real reason. Why uh, uh, when's the date, there, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, pending. Anyways, nobody wants to hear about that <laughs> at all. I guarantee Ooh. it. Jared's so, uh, we've got a couple of announcements today. Let me first uh, elaborate a little bit on what we're going to do here on this here show. We're just not going to talk about old times, but uh, Mike is going to give us a little bit of perspective from Nam from the builder's point of view. And we're also, more importantly, going to find out about his new redirected company and find out what's behind that. And a couple of, he's got a lot of new stuff coming out. And if you're familiar with his stuff, then you're going to be mighty happy about that. And if you're not, go check out nativeaudio.us. I know that's weird, but just go to .us. Or Instagram at nativeaudio. That's right. And you can see what he's up to. All right, before we get crackalacking too deep down this old rabbit hole, we're going to just cover off on a little announcements real quick. Tony, do you have anything? I have no announcements, All but right. I really am I, I'm, 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 I'm anxiously awaiting your announcements. I know, you couldn't even get it out. I got, got, got. Uh, Jared? I just wanted to thank everybody one more time that we ran to at NAM. Perfect. Uh, that, that was it. It was great seeing you guys. Oh, that's a, that's a nice announcement. That is a nice sentiment. All right, so announcement number one. We got a, a real great email from Mark Paget, who is a longtime listener and friend of the podcast. Thank you so much, Mark, for sending that. He was suggesting that we should discuss uh, what kind of things you should get to uh, bring to in the uh, if you're going to the studio to record, like from ah. a from a recording uh, studio's point of view, like things to consider. And I thought, man, oh man, that's right in line with what uh, I had just been discussing with a studio owner in town recently, although not to the degree that he was mentioning, but I said, wow, that's a great idea. And I think that we're going to try to make that podcast happen. So thanks very much, Mark, for sending that along and sharing your thoughts and opinions. And we encourage everyone else to do that as well. It keeps things fresh. Ooh. Do, do studio people like when you bring in like guitars and amps that have ground loops? We're going to find out. Okay. I can't wait. We're also going to find out what a ground loop is. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then also Michael McVeigh and Sean S. S, S. They have actually adjusted their patronage on Patreon upwards, Whoa! which which is like okay. I want to I want to make this clear that it is not. It's like it's great that we're getting the added support, but more importantly, that just speaks volumes to me that we're we're hitting we're hitting some things that are. That we're doing it right in some way, shape, or form. That uh, guys like like these fellows are are willing to say, "Wow, I I actually want to help more." And I just I'm that really blew me away when I got those messages. I've had some great conversations with them. They're great dudes, but more importantly, I, I'm just glad that we're we're you know 
taking some boxes off and making things enjoyable for people who are listening. Um, I think we, it has a lot to do with the, the when I when, the the stories I that so. I tell right before I I, I list the names. Uh, mm, I think it has the ones a, that I edit. Yeah, yeah, that, that, <laughs> those are the ones. <laughs> so You're anyways, really fast at that too. Yeah. Good job, uh, Michael McVeigh and, and Sean. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for your support and for all of our other patrons who monthly help us out so much. Thank you. Thank we you. We also got a four on the floor from Michael Senchuk. Uh, yes. And the four, the four on the floors, I'm, I'm actually going back to all of the executive producers and asking them for their four on the floor. So we're going to share those out. So if you're an executive producer from now on, you're going to get to share your four on the floor. So we're going backwards, uh, starting with Michael Senchuk, who's a new patron oh so we're starting there uh, that does that mean i'll be able to read his name you later will. you will excellent yes and uh so he wanted to pass on the maritime analog valve pusher overdrive whoa now that's a mouthful that is a mouthful and what's interesting about this one is that the company apparently no longer exists and hasn't for a while but he says that this is by far his favorite and most used pedal um, he said that a number of years ago, some musician mentioned in some article that sometimes a pedal just doesn't speak to you and you need to get rid of it and find those that do. And this pedal has spoken to him since he first plugged in. I'm like, hey, that's food for thought. Just, yeah. just having a pedal that doesn't work, uh, you know, is that useful? I mean, if it's a really expensive one, it's worth some money, then maybe hang on to it. But other than that, keep things fresh. Keep them moving. There's so many pedals out there. Yeah. Oh, I've, my gosh. I've got quite a few paperweight pedals. Yeah? You yeah. should give them to me. Well, if you get I a could. processor, you don't have to do so much. That's true. Another one from him, Earthquaker Devices Afterneath Reverberator yeah. and the TC Electronics Helix. These are Nice. And Classic. the Mr. Black Super Moon Reverb. That's like the third mention in a row in a week of Mr. Black. Super Moon. Uh, That's a, lot of, That's a lot of reverb. That's a lot of reverb. A lot of reverb. I still like Mr. Pink better. Yes. yes, I know. Again. All right. Thank you, Tony. I think that's it for right now. That's a lot of announcements. That, that's, 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 a, that's like three fourths that's, of the show. Well, it's, it's a, a four in the floor on there, too. That's a good there four in the floor. Well, that's true. And it's that's making true. up because Mikey gave his four on the floor a long time ago. Yeah, that I did. So, um, you know, we don't want to spend a bunch. Of, we got too much stuff to talk about rather than his old four on the floor, which probably hasn't changed. Okay. Let's talk about what we did in our guitar worlds this week. Uh, spin the wheel of Tony. This actually, this week goes on for about over a month, actually. Mm -hmm. Our fine postal service does a lot of things right. Mm -hmm. But when they screw up, they screw up. Okay. Case in point. All right. So I ordered a, a guitar from... Unless they're one of our fans who are also a postal service, then you're, they're probably doing it right all the time. Well, th well, if they're, if they're listening yes. to us, they obviously they are. It. They would get The it. people I'm referring to do not listen to us, apparently. Yes. So um, I, uh, I had ordered a, a replica of a Dan Armstrong mm -hmm. clear plexi guitar. Mm -hmm. So it left China on the 8th of January. Wow. It made it to through San Francisco Customs on the 10th of January, mm. my birthday, if anyone's thinking about it. So it got across the Pacific Ocean in two days. In two days. It flew across. Yes. Well, literally. It didn't float, obviously. Well, so. no, it was in an airplane yes. and it flew across. If it was a flying V, it might have flown across okay. by itself. Ew. Oh, it made it to the Columbus sh sorting station out by the airport on the 12th of January. Mm -hmm. So there's four days, China, San Francisco, Columbus. It's supposed to come to my post office, which is 43214. It's tracking, it's tracking, it's tracking, it's tracking. And then mm -hmm. what? And nobody can find it. So I'm, I'm in touch with customer service, my post office, the, me, the, the station out, at, out by the airport, Nobody can give me an answer. Tony, this isn't a tiny little teeny weeny little No, guitar. this is a big box. Huge, big, giant guitar. Wait, giant, did they, did giant. they say it was at the facility? No, it says in transit to next. In transit. In transit oh, to also next. Also like wrapped in yellow tape or something? Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it is it's a giant styrofoam box yeah. wrapped in yellow tape. You couldn't miss this. Hmm. So I, I contacted the seller in China and... Uh, 
And he said, well, I don't, I don't know what to do. I mean, I, certainly they couldn't have lost it. Right. And I said, well, apparently they have lost they, it. They so he lost put, it. So he put uh, EMS, who is the shipping agent in China, mm -hmm. and that day it blips in Elk Grove Village, Illinois. That's amazing. Wow. So somehow it made it from so the Columbus Source Tony Station. Tony Dudzik and Elk Grove Village? No. Okay. No. It just made it on a truck somewhere and somebody right. just passed it off. I mean, the Elk Grove Village, as, I, as I'm told, is near uh, O'Hare Airport, which is where Customs is. So I'm wondering if they were going to just send the thing back. But mm. so I get the thing. So finally, long story short. I don't uh, know how short it is, but keep going. Get, 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 get. <laughs> It gets uh, back now. For I, I, the reason I think EMS was involved is somebody lit a fire under someone, and it made it from Elk Grove directly to four three two one four my my post office, and was delivered on the fourth. So the first it, of, it of February of February. So more than a month. It just sat somewhere in the United States, or almost a month. It sat right. somewhere in the United States. And like I said, when, when the and post now you don't want it anymore, so you're going to give it to me. No, I do want oh. it. You know what they did, old buddy? They used it for a tabletop in a break room at a postal place. It could be, or it was yeah. like a serving tray. Or someone That's played right. it cheese, for a long time. A cheese board, if That's you will. Right. Yeah. So anyhow, I'm really happy with the guitar. This is the one that uh, Jared uh, wound a Dan Armstrong style pickup in right. a regular humbucker casing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I have to change out some of the parts and things, but it is not, really... Not on the pickup. Not on the pickup. Yes. The pickup is really cool. We did, we worked out something where, there, where there's a three-position uh, switch That's where right. in the middle position, it's full-on humbucker. Mm -hmm. In the right position, it's just the uh, uh, bridge coil. Mm -hmm. And in the left position, it's just the neck coil. Mm -hmm. It's a single pickup guitar. Yeah. And it's it's just cool. That's super cool, man. And it was I'm looking forward to playing that. It was well, it's heavy, but it's the original Are ones you were saying heavy too. Handle a heavy. I don't guitar? think you can handle a heavy guitar. Yeah. You you're very dainty. I, I've never been called that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, right, cool. Uh, so I guess. All right. Well, we've got 20 minutes left. So Jared. <laughs> Okie dokie. It's Jared time. So I've I've always said. Yeah, I'm not really a big pedal guy. You used to say that about a year ago, and then you started collecting pedals. No, like I got a bunch of cut, and I don't get rid of them. It's a it's a pedal week this week for me. I got a I I got a uh, a Beatronics pedal. Yes, Ooh. and I got to talk with Felipe and and all that at at uh, Nam, and he builds a very unique, awesome pedal. So I'm very excited about that. You got the Royal Jelly. Yes, I did. On whose recommendation? Uh, Todd, I think. I'm just saying. Todd. Uh, I can't wait to play that. Uh, <laughs> and then another really exciting thing is I am trading in the old uh, Red House Electronics for yes. a new... Phaser. That's right. For a, for a new native audio phaser. It's basically the same pedal, but it's the new version. Yeah, well, it's different. And it'll it's have the better. new brand name, so... Yep. I'm really excited about that, too, because Mikey makes some really good stuff, and I've got a couple more of his pedals on my board. So. That is awesome. fantastic. Nice. Yep. It was pedal week. Right on. And that's, you've, I've, I've often heard you say that you're not really a pedal guy. I yeah. still say that, but actually, if you look you what I have, it's, them, not, it's not true anymore. Yeah, you got a load of them. He's got a lot of Mutrons, I'm told. That's true. I do. Uh, Mikey. Uh, just this past week. I did a uh, little repair on my uh, basement. I have a old, uh, it's like sixty eight basement head, but I just went and just did a uh, recap job because I ended up turning it on, and then it was just making all kinds of farting, popping noises. So right. what I did just was like Jared, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, my the, basement did the same thing. Oh gosh! Well, then the guy that I got it from uh, it was probably like four years ago. So I was like, ah, I think it's due for a recap. So went and, um, you know, bought the caps, all this junk. And then I went and, uh, started doing the repair and here come to find out one of the power caps just came unsoldered like it, the vibrations or whatever, just screwed it up. Oh, wow. Was that all it was? Yeah. So after I, you know, soldered that it was working fine, but I just wanted to change all the caps. So changed all the Probably caps. Good idea. Yeah, it really is. Changed it's all the caps, did all that junk. And then here I plug it in. It's working for like 
five seconds, then it starts smoking. Then Coming from the electronics impresario. Well, I'm like, what? You know, and uh, I, I was like, I'm pretty sure I did everything right. So then uh, the, it's the power amp tube that started kind of smoking. So then I immediately turn it off. Um, I start, you know, kind of checking it. Come to find out one of the uh, caps ended up getting shorted. One of the new caps that I got, it was a uh, NOS like cap. So it was like new old stock, you know, and uh, I think just, you know, after time it just cropped out. And um, so what I did was replace that. It started working perfectly. Then, uh, you know, the next day I'm all excited and, you know, my girlfriend comes over and I'm like, oh, hey, you got to check this, uh, check this amp out. I got it working. It sounds amazing. Plug it in. Fuse blows. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? So then, uh, <laughs> so I've already spent like enough time in this amp and I'm just like, ah, oh, this sucks. And it got to the point where I kind of just wanted to throw it in the corner and just n not mess with it till another four years, <laughs> you know, but, um, I cracked it back open and, uh, went back to where I think was, you know, the issue and, uh, here, sure enough, one of the other caps that was an NOS cap, there was only two of that. That means new old stock. Yep. Yeah, new old stock. Uh, there was only one other cap that was similar to that one that shorted. And uh, so I checked that one. Here come to find out that one shorted too. So I don't even know what the chances are. I don't know if that means I had bad luck, whatever. So so the two uh, the, caps that you bought and replaced yeah. were, were shorted. Yes, they were both wow. shorted. Uh, know, luckily, yeah. there was no other caps like of that type yeah. uh, in the amp, but they both shorted um, and then swapped them out. Threw the fuse in there, new fuse, and uh, fired it up, and oh, it sounds so good. You know what Rob Chafe with Mad Cow would say? He would say, you, say? you don't put 1956 tires from that era onto a 1956 Corvette today. I don't know, man. My dad, who's a car collector, would be like, uh, yeah. polish them puppies up and throw them on. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, just out of curiosity, yes. what, did, what did you put in place of the NOS caps? Um, so I actually... <laughs> New ones? I didn't have... Uh, because I have another guy who does all my amp work, but, you know, because I just don't have the time to really kind of dive into these amps. So I ended up asking him uh, for the caps, and so he gave me the caps. Well... Unfortunately, he gave me just enough for the job. So I ran out. So then uh, these were just, uh, they weren't polarized caps. So they weren't as important as the uh, electrolytics for the right. power section. Right. So what I did was um, I just took some of the old film caps and put them in there. Um, and it just, it worked fine. Yeah, good. No, no noise, no whatever. And it sounds beautiful. And now you're nice. going to sell it. No, no, I... I don't, man. <laughs> Never sell a bit. Who am I, I, I Todd I, I, I made a mistake of selling a 62 basement years and years and years ah, ago. Oh, gosh. And it, I, it it kills me to this day. You should buy Jared's. Yeah. I have a 19... <laughs> Look, mid -70s. I making it happen. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. I have a 1970s basement with a 212... But you see, that's a lot. Oh, that's that's, awesome. that's different than a 1962. Yeah. Just a tip. I got you. It's a little tiny bit. <clears throat> uh well what I mean, about you, you buddy? All asked, oh hey come on, man um <laughs> come on Todd. we only have 10 yeah, minutes so left. i had a, I had a <laughs> little show uh, and uh two things happened at that little show i got to use my uh multi guitar case stand off to the side of the stage so that was pretty fun i got to switch out all my black and gold guitars how that many guitars does it hold uh, five, five. Oh, yeah, holy snap. How many did you have, Gosh, I knew, dude? I, I got that one for each. I'd have to get ten of them. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> oh my uh, gosh. And then such a diva. <laughs> <laughs> the, the set's only twenty eight minutes. <laughs> five amps for my five guitars. <laughs> his, his, <laughs> Why not? His guitar tech has to wear hey, white Rick gloves. Can do it. Why exactly. Can Why can't I? <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's my rock Yo, and roll fantasy. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, and then another really interesting thing happened. I had this the uh, the the person who was running sound come up and tell me to turn. We didn't. We weren't mic'd. Uh, we just had a PA, and so we're everybody's just playing full. You know, they're just a amp volume and amp drum volume. volume and everything. And uh, th this person came up and said, "Give me the turn up my guitar three times." I was like, "What? Yeah, turn up? Uh, that, turn that up your guitar? Happens. That's unheard of." <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? I, I, I was playing one time. It, 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 it's never happened to me before because yeah. I was always super loud. And then we were playing at the Andy Man's Treehouse years ago. Yeah, and they said. 
you got to turn up, man. <laughs> it's I like, know. I, yeah. I don't know what to uh, do. I was told that. At one I don't know what that like, means. <laughs> yeah. I know what turned down means. <laughs> right. the, the trick was that that stage was so small. I'm yeah. like, I, I, I'm now like feedback is almost overriding my actual signal. So, but fortunately I held it, you know, I, I held it at bay. How many and, songs? And did, only accessed it when I needed to. How many songs did you say you did? Eight. Eight songs for a tw- what, 30 minute set is what you said? Yeah, you know. Okay. okay. Yeah. I heard, nice. I, I heard the, uh, the phone version of your concert and from my ears, I thought it sounded very balanced and it sounded great. Thank you. I appreciate nice. that, Jared. Uh, all right. We don't have a four on the floor from Mikey, but we do have, uh, I, we're going to substitute that with sort of the nam perspective from a builder we did a little we, bit of nam what did, did you do yeah. a nam wrap up already we did oh that oh, was then that you weren't there but that will uh it, <sighs> that would be the the uh episode that someone will be have have already heard by now that will be uh, released i'm releasing that in two three days the so. episode was amazing by the way yes, yeah it was really good <laughs> must have been yeah. it was uh, we did miss you though Anyways. i won't say it was because tony wasn't there but <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, but you would have heard it by this time. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> weird time space continuum things. We're, we're not going to drag on the whole NAM thing into March or anything like that, but we have a, we're in the unique position to, to have somebody who is actually a builder. Um, that is our friend that we know. Uh, so from your perspective, give us your rundown on, on how you viewed things. So I think uh, my venture out there was a little bit different than um, I guess somebody that was just going out there just to kind of see what else was new or, you know, what's coming out in the industry. Like us. Yeah. And um, so I kind of went out there kind of more on the objective to kind of network, get to know people in the industry, kind of, uh, you know, just really kind of more geared towards trying to find buyers, you know, for my product and stuff. And uh, ended up turning out to be... uh, a success, um, you know, uh, Nam was four days long. Um, uh, I was there from probably eight to six each day. Um, Holy smokes. yeah, Whoa. eight to six each day, just standing, uh, talking. Uh, I think I had somebody at my booth probably every minute. And if I didn't have somebody, I was you dragging. Were very busy, dude. Yeah. I was dragging somebody. Um, I ended up, you know, going there. Um, I had the girlfriend with me too. So, you know, she was running the booth when I wasn't there. Um, you know, I tried to every now and then branch out and kind of, you know, say hi to the neighbors, um, you know, and other people I kind of knew that were going to be at the show. Um, How did you have time to shop for rings out there? I don't understand. I <sighs> did. Okay. Let me tell you. It was a complicated. Okay. <laughs> That's what I used Continue. to pay for the <laughs> the airplane yeah. tickets. <laughs> oh. So uh, no, so um, so I got to see a couple of uh, your friends too on mm-hmm. the show. Um, Copper Sound Pedals. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got to um, you know say hi to uh, Matthew from Matthew Effects. Great dude. Uh, f- uh, let's see who else did I say. I, I, on that note, yeah. I was surprised at how many uh, builders that we have had on the show that when we're talking like, Oh, have you seen so-and-so? And they're like, I haven't had a chance to go talk to anybody. Yeah. And it was like, what a colossal shame. Oh yeah. You know, that is. To, so no, I, I was, I was going to ask you, so yes. what, what day did you get out there on Wednesday? So I got there, uh, yeah, on a Wednesday. Um, now unlike a lot of other people, I actually stayed, uh, more kind of, uh, in LA and, uh, oh, okay. just did the trip every morning. Uh, but the first day we ended oh, up, gosh, yeah, I had the, um, I kind of, you know, that was my only vacation day out in LA. <laughs> so I kind of, uh, you know, just went and just kind of hung around town and stuff like that. Yeah. That first day, but Thursday through Sunday was kind of the, uh, more intense days than mm-hmm. the NAM days. But like I said, uh, just a bunch of networking, got to say hi to a lot of people that I haven't said hi before, you know, to before. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also got to, you know, meet a lot of other people I, you know, if I didn't have, if I wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have got to say hi to them. Uh, you know, I got to meet, uh, you know, the guys over at deep space devices. Oh yeah. Mm. Very nice guys, you know, yeah. uh, very nice guys. Um, then I also, you know, just got to meet, uh, there was tons of people, I, you know, to name everyone would yeah, take too long, to but, um, but there. you know what? One of the coolest things is, is like, it felt like, uh, it wasn't, it didn't seem too awkward saying hi to somebody, you know, it's just like, 
it was like you know i mean you guys know how it You're is in a bit of a brotherhood <laughs> yeah that's yeah, what i was gonna it's, say it's, it's like, like a, all these pedal builders seem there there does seem to be a, a lot of camaraderie it really yeah. is and you know we're all we all have one goal you know we love gear you know we love music and uh so it was easy to uh really just kind of link up with people and just chat gear um and it was great for me because i got to share my um you know share my company and you know my company's goals and my products you know to other people in the industry so it was a great experience and uh that that trip that i went on was uh i i didn't have my own personal booth i actually went with uh bylo's uh delicious audio um his stomp box booth uh, which Pilo is an awesome dude, uh, runs delicious audio, the, uh, blog, check it out. If you know, he always, I mean, it seems like every day his update in his website with, you know, gear and, um, you know, anytime company comes out with something, his, you know, putting something on that website. Mm-hmm. But, um, so it I was ca- weird seeing you there without your tiny guitar though. Oh, wasn't it? Oh, gosh, <laughs> you do not. You don't even know. Um, <laughs> what I what I thought was cool, though. I yeah. mean, I think doing displaying the way that you did in in a group of people. Yes, I think w- attracted more attention than if you just would have had your own little tiny booth space off in the corner somewhere. Well, you know what the coolest thing about that uh, stomp box booth is that there's a lot of like kind of hidden hidden gems um over there you know um i know like i think almost every one of those guys in that booth have been on this show and uh you know it's something uh, it's it's something solid gold effects is going to be oh nice and cooper okay yeah and so you know guys like those you know it's great because it allows some exposure to their products, you know, because, um, you know, for, you know, the smaller companies that might not be able to pay for that kind of space, you know, something like this allows them to kind of get their foot in the door. Um, so it was a really great event. Uh, and I'm definitely planning on doing a summer, uh, summer NAM. So cool. I don't know if I'm going to do a booth. I'm, I'm not sure. It's a little bit easier to get a booth over there just price wise. So I might be shooting to do something like that. Another great thing too. We got it. I mean, we'll probably be there in a little. uh, Yes, you can have your wife with you. I mean, mean, (laughs) your girlfriend. Sorry, (laughs) I'm on the fence myself getting booth there. I'm really, really contemplating doing that. Well, I think it'd be great, uh, especially since you're all your pickups. I have all your pickups in every (laughs) single one of my guitars. Yeah, we were talking about ways to help display to 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 let people interact with the pickups. Got a couple good ideas. Yeah, and I I think. Um, especially at NAM, at least, you know, where I walked, I, I didn't, I don't think I, unless you guys seen, nope. but I didn't see too many nope. pickup guys, right? Nope. No, no other only than the big, you know, Duncan, the big boys. And, yeah. Only the big, you know, EMG, only the, yeah. yeah. EMG, yeah. Uh, I went Demarzio, by DeMarzio, but I didn't really see anybody there. Yeah. And that's the thing. And so, um, Jones. so I think that'd be definitely, uh, something awesome to see because I feel like there wasn't <laughs> pickups over there. Like Curtis Novak and a bunch of other pickup guys, Lindy Fraylin, they were all there walking around. Yeah. Mojo Music Supply, they make pickups. They were just walking around too. I yeah. seen Jared Brandon walking around too. Oh, yep. Yeah. Gosh. I can't his, miss him. Got his yeah. <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> it is funny how many comments oh, yeah. I got. I don't about know if that's that. a good or bad thing. No, pe- people were like, Holy crap, that guy's like way bigger than I thought he was going to be. <laughs> I'm He's a walking a giant. Booth, man. I, I am a walking How does booth. he fit in the studio? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. Uh, but, it, you know, it was it was great meeting people. It was good seeing you guys there. Um, it, it felt like it kind of brought me home seeing yeah. you guys there. So it was great. Uh, so do you think it, the, the money that you spent and the time you spent, do you think it was worthwhile? Yeah. Yeah. You, so I, I mean, just you got even, a ton of exposure. Just even, man. Yeah. I got a ton of exposure. But you know what the funny thing about it is, is it just seems like whatever you put in, that's kind of what you got because there was other people at that booth that didn't have as much people stopping at their booth. You know, it's kind of the kind of thing if you're wanting, you know, if you're wanting to push out, you know, wanting to try to get that exposure, then I mean, you'll get it if you try. So, uh, it was, it was great for me. And I actually, you know, from that, um, you know, I'm in talks right now with, uh, you know, multiple dealers and stuff. So, nice. so it was, it was a really good experience for me and stuff. And, you know, um, the way I kind of view, you know, from a selling perspective is, you know, 
you don't know what these pedals sound like until you play them through, you know, with your hands, with your rig. And so, you know, being able to have my pedals, you know, the dealers there being able to plug in and play and stuff, it, it was a great opportunity, you know, um, way more than I think a demo could, you know, give you. But yeah, it was a, it was a great experience. Nice. I look forward to uh, Summer Nam. Right on. Was there a singular highlight out st- that, that stood out to you? Singular highlight as far as like what? Like industry wise or just trip wise? Marijuana you, was you, legal out there. Yeah, smell. I smelled a lot of that. <laughs> did you did you uh, meet anybody in particular that you're like, wow, okay, that was that was pretty spectacular. Um, yeah, I mean, so I had uh, Robert Keeley. He ended up stopping over at my booth. Brilliant. And um, he was blown away by uh, the Ghost Ridge reverb and just kind of, um, if you guys are familiar, the Ghost Ridge is a multi reverb with uh, four different reverb types and you can have up to four different types of re- uh, reverbs. And I think Jared actually has that pedal. I right? have that pedal. I love it. You can program, <laughs> yeah, four different programs and you can hit them. Exactly. I mean, it's it's the best reverb pedal. Two ever. switches, two knobs, nothing crazy. Uh, but easy to use. Yeah, that easy to use. And now, does, does it have a momentary exactly. switch? Exactly. I, I mean, no, not momentary. It has the soft touch <laughs> switch. That's what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so, I'll never have it if it doesn't have a momentary. I know, right? <laughs> so uh, it was great, though. I ended up, um, you know, from that experience, uh, I ended up, you know, getting home and I think it was like that next Saturday I um, had an order come in through my website and it was Robert Keeley. He bought a oh, um, sh- ghost Ridge and that's stuff. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Frame wow. that. that's rad. yeah. That's yeah. So awesome. I was like, Oh, that's awesome. You know? And then, uh, and then, you know, right now uh, the pedals are out on the websites or the rising sun and midnight. I'm actually sold out of those, which is awesome. But uh, he ended up, you know, was like, Hey, let me know when those are available. Cause I'll pick those up and then gave me a cell phone and we ended up wow, calling that's- and, we That's... called and uh, <laughs> chatted and stuff. Oh. So, so it was it was cool. Is he, is he reverse engineering them now or? <laughs> uh, yeah, m- most likely. <laughs> nah. uh, but no, it was no a way, g- man. <laughs> it was a great it was a great experience, you know. And uh, I do got to say, I got to see. Uh, it's always great seeing Alex from uh, Copper Sound Pedals. Yeah. You know, yeah. I do a lot of stuff up in the Boston area for uh, another person I work for, and uh, you know, so every. You know, when I get a chance, I'll, you know, stop by and say hi to Alex. But I seen him at the show and uh, their booth man was awesome. They had a good booth. You know, and to have, and he, you know, he's a guy that's so detail oriented that, you know, their booth was really, you know, pretty sweet. But yeah, yeah man, it was great, you know, just seeing friends and, you know, anybody in the industry. Nice. Outstanding. Yeah. And we're actually going to do a little something, something with Copper Sound uh, based on our based on that awesome flashlight he made us. Oh, I so, seen that flashlight. Yes. That is killer. Be looking out for that in the near future, everybody. Well, that's a nice little wrap up. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. B plus. Yay. Yeah, keep striving for the A. I like Yay. going to NAM too, but I wasn't part of the last episode with the NAM wrap up. Oh, that was very sad. Um, I know. But we don't, you know. Was there anybody? Okay, uh, Tony, was there a major highlight? Was, I don't want to go spend the entire thing making this well, a NAM recap, but... Tony, let me ask you, was there anybody like doing a, uh, like displaying pit cards over at NAM? You know, I, the only, uh, well, all parts, of course. And they, WD they, they, was there? WD was not at the show this oh, year. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then there were a couple of, uh, uh, I don't know if they were Chinese or Korean companies yeah. that, that do custom work. But, you know, in, in my world, there's not a lot of people. There, there's two types of, of, of pit guard makers. Yeah. People that do what I do, like the onesie, well, yeah, twosie, I, custom stuff, and then the ones that do a thousand at well, a time. Well, to me, you got you got your hometown hero, you know, donut shop, or you got your Krispy Kreme. <laughs> you, right. know, you know what I'm saying? You I got, do like a Krispy Kreme, though. Yeah, Krispy Kreme yeah. is the <laughs> they got the hot but, need a different but, metaphor for that you know, yeah. But what I love about your stuff is you're that guy that's, you know, you're, I mean, you're grinding these things down, you're oh, yeah. cutting these, you know, these are all handmade, and uh, that's what I was wondering, is there anybody doing that at NAM? I, I don't see anybody doing that. Not yeah. no, Certainly not at NAM. I mean, uh, Jared was over at the shop today and, and he got to see, you know, this was a totally custom, this guy had like this sketch of what he wanted. He sent the body in and I spent, you know, eh, probably the better part of an hour just cutting the master template and then fitting it up and everything. But Uh, but it's, it's it's something that that, that does not exist. Yeah. I I just brought in my bass player's bass for, I don't know, for like the sixth guard that I got from him. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's going to do a gold guard for my bass player. Oh, Golden dude, that's awesome. sparkly. You know, okay. you know who I forgot to mention who we met? 
Is that? I met um, this fellow named Phil Pennington and Co. Schneider. They're, and they're the, uh, gonna be the on. Flippin' Flippers podcast. It's going to be on. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And I, 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 I think we're actually one of the highlights. I mean, uh, Curtis Novak and I usually do get together whenever we can at, at the NAMM That shows. was really special. We had a really nice dinner with Curtis and his daughter. And uh, it was a great little Italian restaurant, and we've got to you know chat it up a little bit. I think Curtis is going to be a, a guest he's on a future episode, be on the show. and he's just such a wealth of knowledge. I mean, he just—I don't I, think I, he stopped talking for two hours. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, well, I kind of, yeah, I mean, but we were all sponges. We we're like, yeah, lay it on us, man. <laughs> I, I kind of hijacked the the first half of that whole dinner. Him and I were just pick up this and pick up that and pick ups and yeah, it was a little pickup heavy it was pickup heavy but it should have been because yeah you know, well we could we can't help it no it's, no it was great it it's was not great. every day you talk he, to somebody else a, yeah and he's pickups, uh so. he's got a special place in the guitar world so Absolutely. he was sharing a lot of great stories but i kept on having to say yeah, stop <laughs> tell us that on the actual show <laughs> yeah, right, right. i mean if we had if we had the tape rolling we would have had the episode for oh, my already goodness. done yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it's really interesting part stuff, one so. and two yeah. yeah and we were stuffed <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah. <laughs> anyways, uh, I think that's the last everybody's going to hear about Nam for this, until summer, this show until, until summer. summer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, anyways, let's get on with finding out a little bit more about Mikey Trombley. I'm, I always call him Mikey. Sorry, I don't know. I hope oh, that's fine. We always Mike, that's not Michael, Mikey, whatever. Mikey. Um, Stephen Trombley. Stephen <laughs> Trombley. I will say they had my name tag at I think, uh, Nam as Michael, and I think that was because I typed it in, but oh. I, I felt so official saying Michael. Yeah. I think I'm you like, should change your name to Mike. Travis. Travis, Travis Trombley. Travis Trombley. Oh, that sounds like, like a oh, that a little You could be a country, kinda, country music yeah, that legend. Is, that's Don, a total. Yeah. 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 So anyways, <laughs> enough about Trombley, that. Trombley. Mike, you were an early guest on our show. And that I was. we connected. We we had a great time when you were actually on the show. Uh, we fun. we still get people asking that, like, where did Mike go? People who are going backwards in the catalog, which I encourage. If you're a new user, we got 120 episodes, man. So yeah, was, uh, skip depending on when ten. you're hearing this, it was probably ten. a lot more, but. Eh, skip the first ten. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> the vintage yeah. tapes <laughs> too too far back, <laughs> but Mike was a great guest, and I was just I was so blown away. Uh, I actually shared this story on the last episode. So you'll have to listen to the last episode to hear it. Um, that means you, Mike, to yeah. hear it when it when it oh, goes sure. live. Uh, so I won't rehash that. But um, I'm just I'm glad you're back. Your previous company, Red House Electronics, was doing very very well. Yeah, and you had some really innovative ideas and thinking, and then out of nowhere, poof. You're a different company. So tell us all about that. Well, um, I think the idea actually originally started back when, uh, back in the summer, um, you know, I'll, tr you know, I try to make it out to, uh, you know, where I grew up over in Montana, um, out on the reservation. And for those uh, who don't know. Yeah. So for those of you who <laughs> don't know, uh, I'm Native American and, uh, you know, I was born and raised on the Blackfeet Reservation. Mm -hmm. um, so, which is right next to Glacier National Park. So, you know, I was, my tribe was lucky, lucky enough to, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to be born and or raised in, you know, a beautiful area. But um, anyways, uh, you know, just a short synopsis of uh, my life, you know, uh, about 14, I ended up moving over here to Ohio and then, you know, went to school for, uh, you know, went to high school and then uh, in college at I got my undergrad and master's in electrical engineering. Um, during that time, you know, I was a musician. So what I decided to do is combine the two. And yeah, now you got native audio. You, you glaze over that pretty quick. But one of yeah. the big reasons you're leaving the show yeah. early on is because you were getting your master's in electrical engineering. Like, yes. You're not a guy who's like, I'm going to attempt to build like you're like hyper engineering pedals. Yeah. So on a at, microscopic <laughs> level with digital shenanigans. Right. So just like, so at the like time I was stuff. dabbling in the uh, podcast, I, you know, I was doing podcasts. I was also playing at multiple places. And then, uh, you know, I was doing, uh, let's see, doing school work, all that junk. So it got pretty chaotic. So I had to kind of back down from, you know, a couple obligations and you got a fiance. Yeah. 
<laughs> but <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so, you know, I, I was, uh, out in Montana this past summer and, uh, ended up, you know, going out there and, you know, it's so nice being out there. And then I came back and, you know, just being around family, being around, you know, um, we had North American Indian days in, uh, Browning, which is, you know, it's what it is. I, I kind of describe it as a County fair with a powwow. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good way to put it, but, uh, you know what it is, you know, it's a power. And so, you know, just having those kind of, you know, um, just being around my heritage, you know, and all that stuff, it just kind of made me further emphasize, you know, kind of my products and what I've been kind of displaying in my products. And so, you well, know, I hinting to that early yeah. on, you know, by the, the pedal names that you had were all referencing parts of your heritage. Exactly. We, we, I remember having a very long conversation with you in Chicago about this. Yeah. And so it just kind of, you know, I, you know, my products, I have the running with, you know, which is actually, you know, is my mom's whole side of the family. Their last name's Running Wolf and, you know, um, Ghost Ridge, which is, you know, actually, uh, it was towards, um, you know, when my tribe actually ended up having to declare dependency on the government, they, uh, it was because the Buffalo ended up kind of dying out. And that year, um, 25% of my tribe ended up passing away and they had nowhere to bury the bodies. And so they buried them at Ghost Ridge, which is about 20 miles outside of my hometown. So that's kind of where Ghost Ridge comes from. So all these pedals kind of play a part in my heritage, but what I kind of, uh, what other the Eagle feather. And what I kind of noticed was, okay, all these products are hinting at my native American heritage, but then you have the name red house electronics, which to me just, you know, did disconnect. It disconnected for one. The name was really long, uh, two, the logo just didn't fit the other pedals. And so initially when I started, it just, it kind of just seemed like the branding ended up taking this direction. So it almost seemed like it was natural for the name to change to evolve. Yeah. yeah to evolve. And so at that time I ended up asking, you know, other people, Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? You know, I was like, uh, but the thing was, I wanted the name to look, I wanted the name short and then I wanted it to be clean, simple, uh, just kind of, to reflect the product itself, you know, because mm -hmm. the product itself has grown into its own kind of little unit. So, uh, so then I, um, it wasn't till I think October, I ended up finally um, switching Red House Electronics, switched over to Native Audio. And, um, and that's no I, small task, by the way, changing an entire business name. Oh yeah. gosh, yeah. it was yeah. not a small task. And what was great too was uh, I, I ended up working it out great. It just ended up working out perfectly with my dealers and stuff. You know, the biggest thing about doing a rebranding is one, not losing your following, you yeah. know, because you end up developing this community around your product and, you know, Jared and Tony can kind of, you have your people. One, I was like, oh gosh, this is going to be, this is going to, you know, you know, you start thinking how are, you know, what are people going to think about this? And I just kind of had that reassuring thought, like this product, the branding, everything's kind of been me kind of reflection of like my ideas and stuff. So I was like, well, what's any different than the name wanting to be something that, you know, I want. Sure. And, uh, and so, uh, from that, you know, I ended up doing the name change and I ended up working out with my dealers. My dealers were really awesome as far as, you know, I ended up doing like, you know, swapping the products out and all this other stuff they made, they helped that, you know, go, uh, perfectly. Um, and I just got a great response response from the community. Um, you know, I mean, everyone that I've seen at the guitar shows that knew me as red house, they're like, dude, I love the name change. I just think it's a little bit more of the product, you know, so they, you right. know, everybody's waiting yeah. for that. Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, it's so it, it was, you know, it was this great, uh, hearing, you know, responses from, you know, the other people. Cause it's kind of that reassuring, like, yeah, I, it was a good move, but it was a hectic couple of months, you know, trying to do the whole sw uh, swap. And, um, so yeah, uh, it wasn't an easy task, but I finally stickers, did shirts, stickers, shirts, you know, you know dude, that's the easy part. It's all the legal. That, that's well, bullshit. yeah, all the legal stuff, uh, you know, and also trying to create the logo, logo and all that other stuff. But, um, you know, Alex, you know, my design guy from, uh, at wolf dot bomb on Instagram, he ended up, uh, you know, helping me out so much with the design and stuff. And, uh, 
yeah, it just kind of all fit into place. And uh, now at this point, I'm kind of done kind of shifting the rebranding. And now I can kind of more focus on designing and coming up with new uh, ideas for my products. That's awesome. Cool. Man. Yeah. So speaking of new designs and new products and whatnot, I know that you've made some adjustments to your current line and you're working on new pedals. So tell, give us a low down on where you're going. With yeah. That. So, um, coming back from, uh, Nam, you kind of just feel refreshed. You kind of, you know, you see all the people doing like new stuff, all that stuff. And you know, that stuff kind of, to me, it inspires me and it's like, man, I got to really kind of step up my game, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a good feeling. And, um, so coming back from Nam and, uh, just talking to, you know, people and displaying my products, I kind of seen some improvements that I could do myself. Um, so one of the things that I'm going to be doing here, in the next uh, month is I'm going to be updating uh, my phaser. Right now, my phaser has like uh, has five knobs and then like three toggle switches. Back to the point I was making with you know my products. I love my products being easy to use, intuitive, um, but they offer a lot of functionality and a wide range of you know sounds. So what I'm doing is I'm actually dropping the two switches and keeping the five knobs and stuff. So. And it fits in a little bit uh, better with the product line. And another thing that I'm doing is I'm actually uh, working on a delay. And uh, it's been probably the most requested effect out of how you all my a delay is like really weird. <laughs> and uh, but you know the thing is, is I didn't want to just come out with a delay just to come out with a delay. I had to come out with a delay that you look at it and you're like, yeah, that's native audio. So um, this new delay that I'm uh, coming out with, um, it's an analog voiced delay. So it's not an analog delay, but um, you're able to get kind of the kind of the frequency range and kind of the impurities um, that you would of a analog delay. Um, but you get um, kind of, you know, your typical analog controls like mix, uh, you know, feedback. Um, but you also get modulation depth and modulation rate control all slammed into that, like, you know, small package. But, but this is a digital pedal. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So just making that. Yeah. So clear. it's a digital pedal, but it sounds, you know, it's right. voiced like an analog pedal. And, uh, but the, one of the cool I, things. I remember when we were talking on the phone, you're like, bro, bro, <laughs> bro, you don't even know. Bro, it's, bro, <laughs> you don't even know it's digital, but it sounds like analog. It's perfect, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I have a very extensive uh, vocabulary. Bro, insert nerd terminology. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, you know, so I, and this thing has been, uh, it's been in the works for a couple months now. And, you know, I, uh, a couple of people are kind of like on my hot contact list. Like there, there are somebody I always bounce ideas off. One of the people being Eric Marrow from, um, Eric Marrow on YouTube, yep. uh, check his videos out. Um, awesome. You know, his He's awesome, yeah, his yeah. awesome video, uh, videographer. And, uh, but anyways, he's one of the guys that kind of bounce ideas off of. And then another one's Sean Gibson, mm -hmm. um, noise from the real, yeah, the noise real. And so, um, so, you know, I have a lot of people out in the industry that I'm kind of bouncing ideas off, you know, and one of the things was, is like, I wanted to do a tap delay. And so, you know, so I ended up doing this, uh, once I ended up getting the, you know, tap delay to work, I was like, all right, this is cool, but what makes this unique? You know, what makes this separate from all the other tap delays? And I was like, man, I really have to slap that native audio, native audio feel to it. So, um, momentary switch, momentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up, <laughs> I ended up asking people, I was like, and you know, get gold, <laughs> you know, and the one thing was like, do I put a delay time knob on here? Like, because I feel like pedals that have tap on them, are you really messing around with that delay time knob that much? That's assuming everybody's using a tap delay too. D exactly. And so, so, but there's a, yeah. And back to that point is, you know, not everyone's using a tap delay. So I was like, but I got to find out some way to really integrate like a individual time control knob on here. And, uh, but I got to do it the way native audio would do it, you know, the way I would do it. And, uh, so I ended up, kind of, you know, with all my other products, I have the tap and ramp mode, which ramp is kind of, a, um, reflects the kind of functionality of like a Leslie rotary speaker. You have your slow speed, fast speed, and it kind of bounces between the two. And so I was like, man, that would be awesome to put on a pedal because, or put on a delay because, you know, as musicians, we start getting really wonky with our delays. 
you see a lot of people turn the feedback up and then turn the delay time to get some really kind of mm-hmm. oscillating. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> yeah. Choo, 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 choo. <laughs> sounds. <laughs> and um, so I was like, oh man, that would be really cool to incorporate on my pedal. Well, so I ended up coming out with the ramp functionality, which, you know, you can choose a slow, de- a slow delay, fast delay, and you can bounce between the two. And it sounds really cool because what it sounds like is you're bouncing between two different positions, you know, on a mm-hmm. delay time. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm still finalizing a couple other things and hopefully I'll have it out by April, I think. Rad. Excellent. Yeah, man. What, uh, do we have a name for this yet? Uh, no, not yet. I, okay. I think you seen it at NAM. It was literally a blank. <laughs> it yeah. was, uh, I'm going with the kind of, uh, turquoise kind of green looking color, kind of like a darker kind of green, but, um, on a, on a sort of a graphite colored case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah, graphite. the black textured. Yeah. And so, uh, but yeah, at NAM, I, <laughs> I wanted to have something to display to the people, you know? So I ended up just getting that printed up and stuff, but, um, I'm just kind of fine tuning the hardware and working on the design coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Well, Mikey, it looks like you're at the end of your quart size <laughs> monster energy <laughs> drink. So I, we appreciate you sharing your story. And uh, getting everybody updated on, you know, what's going on with Red House, what happened to Red House, and now your native audio. And uh, I, I like, really I like the new, future. I like the new name, yeah, the new it's angle. Perfect. It's, it's, oh, I think thank it's, you guys. It's, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, I'm excited. You know, I'm, I'm pumped for, uh, you know, what this year has in store. And I'm even more pumped to, uh, you know, get new product out there. Yeah, yeah. well, that's good because we need it. All right, peoples. Jared. Well, everyone, hold on to your hats because now it's time for Would You Rather. All right. All right. Today's Would You Rather is brought to us by Walter Laramore, and he is on he, Instagram. He, yeah, he, he uh, I was talking with him on Instagram. He oh, Instagram. shared a nice little comment uh, about the, our last episode or formerly last episode. And uh, I said, hey, would, do you have a would you rather you'd like to hear? And boom, he gave it to us. Nice. So that's, that's how it works around here. Well, check this out. So following a do-it-yourself accident, which you damaged the neck pickup on your Telecaster, you need to replace it and decide to change things up a bit. Would you rather install a P90? Or would you rather have like a, a PAF like humbucker? Mm, okay, so that's going in the neck position. Yes, it is. See now that that my favorite Telecaster substitute pickup was not mentioned there, mm. ah, which would be a filter wide range. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, a filtertron to me. I, I I think a filtertron. That's not the would you rather. Tony. I understand, but I'm 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 doing this under protest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. This it's actually. That's actually a, a good idea. That's a good question. All right, so what are you going to do, Antoine? What are my choices again? Antoine P90, Maloney. P90. P90. Or PAF in the neck position of a Telecaster. I mean, I, I, I do like P90s, but I think in a Telecaster, a humbucker, a, a PF style uh, humbucker actually works really well. Let, let's give a little, just a brief... You you just clarified. You said a humbucker, and then you said, "Well, a PAF style." Right. Well, I mean, the, I mean, humbuckers can be you know from everything from a typical like a you know a Super vintage style, a vintage, all the way up to uh, yeah, like a, a JB or something that's just yeah, yeah. super super high output. Yeah, the choice was just a PAF style. Yeah, I mean, a PF style. I nice think and creamy. Is, it's yeah. I mean, it's got Alnico magnets. It's uh, it's got. I mean, it, th- it's those the generally. Humbucker. Yeah, that actually replaced the P90. Well, that, that's debatable. Right. The PAF replaced what? the P the PAF replaced the P90 at the Gibson factory. Yeah. And then they brought the P90s back actually in the early 60s and they put them on their junior models on their lower end models. But the uh, the difference is pretty much the PAF has two coils and um there's no hum noise, there's no 60 cycle. Right. And the P90 has that single cycle hum, but they're around the same output. So 
Seth Lover is known for the, right. the Gibson and the PAF. Mm-hmm. There was also uh, in the Gretsch world, uh, actually the Filtatron uh, predated the Gibson mm-hmm. PAF. Uh, what was they his name? wired it different though, right? I think they are wired differently. Yeah, they wired it but parallel instead it's of It's still in the series. same idea that it is uh, right. two coils, right. reverse yeah. wound, reverse polarity. Just a bit outside. But anyhow, <laughs> so I'll go with yes. the Filtertron. Okay. <laughs> uh, <man. laughs> no, but no, no, no. I'll, st- I'll stick to the, uh, the PAF style. Yeah. It's a good substitute. Uh, obviously, you have to route the body a little bit more. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, but it's still it, it. In my experience, that has been probably that that would be a better replacement than a P ninety. Okay, Jared PAF all the way. There, there's no, there's no comparison for the for the neck position for the neck position. Okay. Yes, and it would be a very low. You do, I know PAF. that you do love a P ninety. I absolutely do. But not in the neck position of a Telecaster. Not in the Telecaster. All right. That's, that's correct. Well, let me ask you this. What kind of style would you be playing if you had like a uh, P90 versus a P, uh, PAF? Bridge position. Just, just bridge <laughs> position? Style music? Yeah, what kind of style of music? <laughs> I just taped the switch to the bridge <laughs> position. Right. Just, I yeah, that's a legit just, question. That's, rolling, a, that's rolling a legit stones. question. Kind oh. of like stuff. Rolling Stones? Yeah. Macabre. Yep. Macabre. That's, that's, okay. a, uh, that's the famous Telecaster with the, uh, with the PAF, PAF, and PAF. Okay. Yeah, the but Mac, he was I'm asking sorry. about P90s. Yeah. No, I was actually wanting to know kind of a compare and contrast of yeah. the, uh, what, what well, kind of so, styles so would be associated. Who might we have heard that had a P90 and a Telecaster? No one. Oh, boy. No one. I don't know. Oh, well, here's the, okay. here's the problem with putting a P90 in a Telecaster is you are moving the He's center shaking of shaking a crooked finger at me. By the way, <laughs> it's right. crooked, damn it! Uh, you you are moving the center of the pickup further away from the neck. Yeah, uh, yeah. compared to where uh, a, a, a the the tele neck pickup normally is. Right. Versus one of the PAF coils is in about the same spot. Yeah. So that would make it a little bit more. Uh, it would make it less right. Make it less right. It would sound like a. I don't like. It would start to sound more like a middle position. <sighs> I mean, marginally. Strat, yeah. I mean, it's still a neck position, so you're you're still going to get yeah, the same. It is marginal. But if if you if you subscribe to the theory of the neck pickup should be placed on the third harmonic, which okay. is where it sits on a on a Telecaster or a Strat. Um, uh, you know what? That's a brand new theory. I have not. I've honestly never heard that. Yeah, I haven't heard that either. Oh, you haven't heard that? Well, that's amazing. We just learned that's, something. It's, it's, I know. It's, it's I, where the I where the boom. boom where the twenty fourth fret would be on a Telecaster yeah. is where the that's the third uh, harmonic. Okay, it's the third harmonic. So twelfth, you know, ding, and then you go if you go up uh, right above the the neck pickup, it yep. goes. It's the third right. octave on the. Well, how about that? I hope everybody out there who's listening right now just learned a little bit of something. I mean, I literally just learned. I just learned it. <laughs> you didn't know that? No, yeah, the I didn't. Terminology no, I, didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. I really I, didn't. The terminology, plus I've never thrown these we, in my we, Telecaster. Well, it does it, that so, I don't so have. when you go home, yeah. uh, just pick up a guitar, yeah. do the 12th fret harmonic. Okay. Then go With up my to Jared Ryan pickups. Yeah. Yeah. Go 12th yeah. And then go, go, go about where, you know, halfway further up, yeah. where about the 24th fret would be and okay. do, do another harmonic. Okay, That's, I have to go home and try that. Yeah. Well, from what they said, I think I actually might go with the PF. Um, I just want something that will be a lot smoother. I'm assuming it would be probably, uh, per, as compared to the P90, it's going to be less uh, fizzy. I guess with that, it'll, it's going to be less bright. Yeah. yeah, less bright. I just want yeah. something, especially in the neck uh, position. You know, in the neck position, I'm looking for something that's a little bit smoother, something a little bit more warmer. Warm. And I think yeah. that's what the PAF will uh, deliver. So, Absolutely. totally. For me, PAF. All right. Me too. I'm going to go PAF. Sorry, everybody. I, I was going to do P90 just to be contrary <laughs> <laughs> but no i i would i would have to agree with that especially with the new knowledge that i just learned so that's that's neato all right so that's the maybe the first unanimous one i believe it is it probably the first we'll have to maybe. go back through the previous 123 episodes yeah and see Brilliant. everybody out there go through them all and let us know for right or wrong yeah that's a great idea Okay. Woo, doggies. Well, this has been a whole lot of fun. Uh, Tony, we got a few people to take care of real quick. We do? We do. 
Oh, our executive producers. That's correct. I love this section. This is my favorite section, too. And I'm told That's that you get to talk the longest. I'm told that because of my the the, the stories that I tell, mm-hmm. that uh, not only are more people becoming Patreon mm-hmm. members, mm-hmm. but some are actually increasing their amounts that they, they are, are just bribing me. Patriot patri- more patri- patreonizing. Yes. Well, they like Tony's story. <laughs> well, let's just say you know. Let's just get it over with. Let's just say you want to support a program that you dearly love. Yeah. Mike, do you want to support a program that you dearly love? Of course. Okay. How, do I, how do I support? Okay, Mike, let me tell you. You would go to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs, and you will find many different levels that you can help participate in. Uh, at least four. At least four last count. Where do you guys start out at? One dollar. One dollar. Which goes up to five dollars. Five dollars. Then ten dollars. Ten dollars. And then if you really want, you can do a twenty. Or one million dollars. Yeah. And actually, to be honest, we've had, like I mentioned before, we had a couple people who like basically bridged gap and just made up their own numbers, which is that's awesome, awesome too. Yeah, yeah. in the yeah. middle. So what's it worth? That's what. That, yeah, I guess yeah. You just ask them. You what's can worth. do ten dollars and one cent. But at every level, you get uh, these great prize packages, things from little uh, barefoot and buttons and stickers and guitar dance. picks and buttons. t-shirts and. Mm. You name it, but and you get a podcast too, That's and you phenomenal. get a free one point one hour and fifteen minute plus, usually more than that, hour podcast almost dang every week of the whole dang year. That's right, dang, dang, dang. dang. It's a lot of dangs. But when you become an executive producer, in addition to all these great things and the and the 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 feeling that you feel in the cockles of your heart. You get to have your name read on the thing. That's right, Jared. You get your name read on the thing. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Let's do it. So I think I'm going to go from newest to oldest. Okay. Let's welcome on board Michael Sanchez. Hey, All right. hey, Michael. Welcome. Brian Robison, Jonathan Jerusik, Ken Sayers, Corey Nigro, Doug Gann, Brad Partridge, Michael Van Zant, Doug Christ, Darren Gregory, Robert Marfleet, John Anglin, Chris Kearney, Sean S. Oliver Gonzalez, who we met at NAM. Yep, you bet. That's right. Good to see you. Uh, John Daly, Robin Smith, Pete Marshall, Carlos Mancha, Matt Brammer, David Wolfson, Martin Cliff, and Tom, Tom Barazin. Oh, we also met Corey Nigro at the, at the NAM. Hey! I was going to go back and hit that one, but yeah. I was going to let you finish first. Yes, yes. Thank you all so, so very much. I mean, we really do appreciate yes, sir. all the help that we get. Yep. It absolutely helps us 100%. So, uh, Mike. Yes. Where can people find you these days? Uh, you can find me at Instagram at Native Audio. Um, and just head over there. I usually update a photo every single day. Um, if you feel like contacting me, go to nativeaudio.us. Um, I'd love to chat. Tony Baloney. Yes. Where can people find you? Well, let's say you're just at, at your wit's end trying to figure out how you're going to fit this P90 uh-huh. into a Telecaster pickguard. Or a PAF. Or, or four a, PAFs. Or, or, or at least two PAFs. Yes. Just go over to pickguardian.com. Mm-hmm. And you can contact me, take a look at some of the things that I've been doing. Go over to Instagram and see some of the projects I've been working on. That's the, the Pick Guardian and the number one. That's right. And uh, there's some things on Facebook and all, but yeah, yeah, if you have questions, just ask. Drop me an email, send me a text, direct message on Instagram. That'll work. Yeah, yeah, I get a lot of those too. So all right. just uh, just just let me know what you need, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I can help you out. That's right, Jared. Well, if anybody needs some new pickups or new old looking pickups, uh, come to BrandonWildPickups.com. And I also do repairs and get them uh, out the door pretty quickly. Hit me up if you need something new. Yes, I just got I, I just uh, got a, a new set of PAF style pickups. Excellent oh, yes. from Jared today. Brilliant. Are you going to put them in your telly? <laughs> no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not putting them in my yeah. telly. New nickel covers too. Yeah, Ooh. it's like jewelry. It's, it's, yes, it excellent. Is. Uh, you can shoot me a message directly on Instagram if you like. You can also send an email to todd at theguitarnobs.com. 
Everybody, we thank you for listening. We really appreciate your support. We love hearing comments from you, and we're glad that you're out there listening. Have a great guitar week, and subscribe! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Same damn thing. Here you go, here you go. <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on. Have fun editing this one. Oh, my God. Jesus. And it's not us. It's you this time. Uh, I know. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also, be sure to check out our Instagram at guitar knobs. Catch you next time.